Hello everyone, this is Dr. Saeed Fallofini. In this video, I'm going to go through a couple of questions that are hopefully going to help you as you prepare for your exam. Just make sure that when you read these questions, pause the video, solve the question yourself, and then go through the rest of the video and compare your answers with the one provided in the video. Let's look at the first question. So there are two restaurants in a small town, restaurant M and restaurant B. A survey has shown that 20% of customers at restaurant M will switch to restaurant B next week, and 30% of customers who are eating at restaurant B right now will go to restaurant M next week. Now, the first question is that if the market share for M restaurant is currently 50%, then what is the market share of this restaurant a month from now? Question B. What is the market share of these restaurants uh, in the long run? And part C, what is the mean first passage time from restaurant M to restaurant B? And what does that mean? So make sure to pause the video at this point, solve the question, and then go through the rest of the video. So obviously this is a Markov chain question. The very first thing that we have to do when we want to answer this question is to find the random characteristic of interest. And here the random characteristic of interest is the restaurant that people are choosing each week. And what are the possible values for this random characteristic of interest? Two possible values, M or B. So the very first thing is to put the one step transition probability matrix together. That's matrix P. And based on the data that we have in this problem, we can see that if a person is reading is eating at restaurant M right now, there is 80% chance that he will continue eating at restaurant M next week and 20% chance that he will switch to restaurant B. And if a person is eating at restaurant B right now, there is 30% chance that he will switch to restaurant M and 70% chance that he will continue eating at restaurant B. Now, with this one step transition probability matrix, let's answer the three questions. So, for part A, we want to see if the market share between the restaurant M and B is 50 50, what would be the market share of restaurant M a month from now? So, what is market share? Market share means if we pick a person, random person right now, there is 50% chance that the person is eating at restaurant M and 50% chance that the person is eating at restaurant B. B. And if you remember, that's, that's vector Q. And now we want to, and if we know that this share between restaurant M and B is 50%, what is the market share a month from now? And remember, in this problem, uh, people change restaurant every week. So if you want to know what is the market share a month from now, that's after four weeks. Which is, which is after four transitions. So the first thing we need to calculate is P4, which is a matrix that shows the chances of transitions between restaurant M and restaurant B after a month or after four weeks or after four transitions. For example, here, there is about 62% chance that a person who is eating at restaurant M right now still eats at restaurant M a month from now. And there is about 70% chance that the person switches to restaurant B after a month. The next thing that we need to know is vector Q, which is 50-50%, the share of mark, uh, restaurant M and restaurant B. And the next thing we need to calculate is multiplying vector Q by P4. And the resulting vector is the share of mark, uh, restaurant M and restaurant B after four transitions. So if right now the market share between restaurant A, M and B is 50-50%, after four weeks, 59% of customers are eating at restaurant M and about 41% are eating at restaurant B. So market share of restaurant M after a month will be about 59%. Next, we want to know the market share of each one of these restaurants in the long run. And remember when the term long run comes, 
that means the city state probabilities. So all we need to do is to write down the famous equation. Vector pi equals to vector pi multiplied by one step transition probability matrix P. And that leads into these two equations. And remember, we know always one of these, equa these equ equations in redundant. So and it's dependent on the other. So we can drop any one of them. So let's say here we pick to drop um, second equation. And then we add a new equation, which is pi 1 plus pi 2 equal to 1. Now we have two equations, two unknowns. And here I just rewrote these two equations. They are the same. And with these two new equations, then we can find vector pi 1 and pi 2, which will be 60% and 40%. And that just means that the share of restaurant M in long run will be 60% and share of restaurant B will be 40%. Lastly, we want to know what is the mean first passage time for restaurant M to restaurant B, and what does that mean? Okay, mean first passage time from restaurant M to restaurant B means that if a person is eating at restaurant M right now, how many more times will, or more weeks the person will continue eating at restaurant M before he switches to restaurant B? So... That's shown with M and B. That's mean first passage time going from restaurant M to restaurant B. And a person who eats at restaurant M right now will either switch to restaurant B next week, which will be one transition, or this person will continue eating at restaurant M next week with probability of PMM. And then we'll go from restaurant M to restaurant B in whatever number of transition it will take. And by putting the value 0.8 for PMM from our first, uh, one step transition probability matrix, then the equation becomes as 1 plus 0.8 M and B. And that leads to the value of 5 for mean first passage time for going from restaurant M to restaurant B. And that means, as I said, if a person is eating at restaurant M right now, the person will continue eating at restaurant M for five more weeks before he or she switches to restaurant B. Now, for the same problem, we want to answer one more question. So now suppose that uh, the total available revenue in this restaurant or available profit in this restaurant is one million dollar and the owner so that's the that's the total profit like if every restaurant could attract all the customers they would profit about one million dollar now the owner of a restaurant n is considering to open a new restaurant call it restaurant n and he wants to see if this new adding this new restaurant restaurant would increase his market share he has done some market study and he has found that if a customer is eating at restaurant M right now, there is 10% chance that he will go to restaurant B next week and 20% chance that he will go to restaurant N. If a customer is eating at restaurant B this week, there is 20% chance he will go to restaurant M and 20% chance he will go to restaurant N. And if a customer is eating at restaurant N right now, there is 20% chance he will go to restaurant B and 20% chance he will go to restaurant N. There is also an additional cost of $100,000 for operation of restaurant N. And the question is, should the owner of the restaurant go ahead and build the restaurant N? And if it will increase his market share overall or not? So this becomes a new problem, basically, where still the characteristic of interest is the restaurant that people pick in each week. But now there are three possible values, M, N, and B. And... So how we f should find out if the market share has changed or not? So remember in part B of this question, to calculate the market share in the long run, we calculated vector pi. And now we have to do the same. Now with this uh, three-state transition probability matrix, we have to find the new market share, new city state probabilities, and compare the two and see how that affects the total market share and total revenue. 
So to go ahead, we will put together the one step transition probability matrix for this new setting where we have three possible values for our state M, N, and B. And below is, and this matrix P is basically the one step transition probability matrix based on the information given in the problem. Now, if you want to find the city state probabilities for this new setting, we have to set up our equations. So first equation is vector pi equals to vector pi multiplied by matrix P, one is the transition probability matrix, which leads to these three equations. As we know, one of them is redundant. We can drop any one of them and add a new equation, which will give us three independent equations, three unknowns that can be solved and find a unique answer for these three equations. So if you remember, based on the example we solved in class, we will rewrite these three equations to bring every unknown in one side and the constants on the uh, other side. And then we put together the matrix form of these three equations where we have the matrix of coefficients multiplied by uh, vector pi equal to vector of right hand side values. And to be able to solve these equations, we multiply both sides of this equation by inverse of the matrix of coefficients. And that would lead to vector pi equals to inverse of the matrix of coefficients multiplied by matrix of right hand side value 0, 0, 1. And that would lead to the values of pi 1, pi 2, pi 3. Now, pi 1, if you remember, based on the order, we put the values in our first uh, step transition probability matrix. Pi 1 is for um, restaurant M, pi 2 is for restaurant B. And pi three is sorry, pi two is for restaurant N, and pi three is for restaurant B. Again, pi one for restaurant M, pi two restaurant N, pi three restaurant B, and since the owner of restaurant M and N are the same person, now the share of market share of that person will be 0 0.403 plus 0 0.333, which is about. Uh, 73% of market share. So the share of the person where he had only one restaurant, restaurant M, according to part B, was about 60%, if you remember, 0.59 something. So roughly about 60%. And if the total profit in the market is $1 million, then in previous scenario where there was only restaurant M and B, the share market share would be about $600,000. But now, if we add restaurant M, the market share of this owner would be 0 0.403 plus 0 0.333 multiplied by $1 million. And also deducting the cost of operation of restaurant N, which will eventually lead to about um, $636,000 and um, extra. So we see that overall, the market share, if their owner builds restaurant N, would be more than previous scenario when he only owns restaurant N. So we would recommend him to go ahead and build restaurant N. Okay, this is the second question, which is related to a decision tree. So in this question, a nuclear power company is deciding to build a nuclear power plant at Diablo Canyon or at Rogers City. The cost of building the plant is $10 million at Diablo and $20 million at Rogers City. However, if the company goes, goes ahead and builds the power plant at Diablo, there is a chance that they have an earthquake in the next five years. And if that happens, the company will lose about $30 million. And using prior knowledge, they know that there is 20% chance that an earthquake happens at Diablo. And now company can pay about $1 million to a geologist and they can uh, predict the chance of um, earthquake. So the geologist record has shown that if that, that he has shown that the geologist will predict an earthquake 95% of the time that an earthquake is going to happen. And also he will predict no earthquake 90% of the time that no earthquake is going to happen. Now the question is that should the company go ahead and hire the geologist? And also uh, we need to know the expected value of sample information. So 
let's summarize some of the information we have in this slide. First, we know the chance of earthquake happening at Diablo is 20% and no earthquake is 90%. Then if we look at the last couple of sentences, the last two sentences, though that's very, those are very important sentences. It says that the geologist's past record indicate that we will predict an earthquake 95% of the occasions in which an earthquake happens. So that's probability of predicting earthquake if an earthquake is going to happen is 95%. So the complement, probability of predicting no earthquake if an earthquake is going to happen is 5%. The continue of that sentence on the, the problem says that the geologist will predict <clears throat> no earthquake 90% of the time that uh, an earthquake will, no, will not happen. So probability of predicting no earthquake if no earthquake is going to happen, 90%, and <clears throat> as a, <clears throat> sorry, and as a result, the complement will be probability of predicting earthquake if no earthquake happens, which will be 10%. So this is very important that you extract these right probabilities from this problem statement and write them down. Next, let's put the structure of the decision tree together. So the first decision the company is facing is should they hire the geologist or not? If they hire the geologist, the lower branch, then the geologist will predict the earthquake or will predict no earthquake. If the geologist predict an earthquake will happen, then the company has to decide to build at Diablo or to build at Roger City. And if they build at Diablo, then an earthquake will happen or not happen. And if they build at Roger City, there is no problem with earthquake. And if the geologist says no earthquake will happen, again, the company has to decide to build at Diablo or to build at Roger City. If he builds at Diablo, then an earthquake may happen or may not happen. And if they go with the decision of not hiring the geologist, then they have to decide again to build at Roger City or at Diablo. And if they build at Diablo, then an earthquake may happen or may not happen. Once you put the structure of the tree together, then specify the value of a profit or revenue or cost associated with the branches. So this is the, um, for example, there's the scenario when um, the company decides to build at Diablo uh, for which they have to pay $10 million, so that's minus 10. And uh, also an earthquake happens for which they lose $30 million, that's minus 30. And since also in the, uh, the, the branch in which they have paid the geologist, they also have paid him $1 million, so that's minus 1. So minus 41 is the cost associated with this branch. For this one, they build at the Diablo, that's minus 10 million, and no earthquake happens, so they don't lose anything. And they also have to pay the geologist $1 million for prediction, that's minus 1, so that's minus $11 million. And for this one, they bill at Rogers minus $20 million, and they also uh, pay the geologist $1 million, so that's minus 21. But since no earthquake happens at Rogers, they don't lose anything. So similarly, you specify the value associated with other branches. Next things you need to do is to specify the probability associated with the branches. And remember, before you go specify the values, just write down in terms of the conditional probability, what is the probability associated with each branch. For example, this is the probability that earthquake occur if the prediction says that earthquake will occur. And this is the probability of no earthquake occur if the prediction says that earthquake will happen. Or this one is the probability that earthquake happens if prediction says no earthquake. And this one is the complement, which is the probability of no earthquake happening if the, per if the prediction says no earthquake. And if you compare these probabilities with the ones in previous, previous slide, which is given in the problem, that you will see they are not equal. And that means you have to use conditional probability to calculate the value of these probabilities. So let's calculate the value of the first probability in this um, tree. So the probability of earthquake happens if the prediction says earthquake will happen. So using the definition of conditional probability, we can rewrite this as probability of earthquake happen and 
prediction says earthquake happens divided by the probability of prediction says earthquake happens. Now, what is the probability of numerator? We can rewrite this based on the probabilities that we have, which is probability of per, uh, prediction says earthquake if earthquake happens, multiplied by probability of earthquake happening. The first part is 0.95, which is what we extracted from the problem statement. Probability of earthquake happening is also 20%, which gives 0.19 uh, as the probability of this of, of the numerator. And probability of denominator, probability of earthquake prediction says that earthquake happens. We can rewrite it as probability of prediction says earthquake happens. If earthquake happens, multiply by probability of earthquake happening, plus probability of prediction says earthquake happens. If no earthquake is going to happen, uh, multiply by probability of no earthquake happening. The first part will be 0.95 multiplied by 0.2 plus the second part will be 0.1 multiplied by 0.8, and the result will be 0.27. So the final probability that we are looking at is numerator multiplied by denominator, which will be 0.704, which is... So the value we calculated will be this value on the decision tree, 0.704. And obviously, the other branch is the complement probability of no earthquake if Prediction says earthquake, which will be 0.296. Similarly, we can calculate the value of other branch, uh, the probability of other branch, it will be 0.0137, and the complement as well. I strongly recommend that you calculate these last two probabilities for yourself and check the values and make sure they are that you can get the similar values. So next. And now that we have the value of the, the, the cost associated with branches and the probabilities, we can now do the calculations from right to left. First, we have to calculate the value associated with event nodes. So for this one, to get the value, we multiply the value associated with branch by its probability plus the value associated with the other branch multiplied by the probability. So minus 41 multiplied by 0 0.704 plus minus 11 multiplied by 0 0.296, and that would be minus 32.12. And we just do similar calculation to get the value of this um, even node, which is minus 11.41. And then we need to pick between these two decisions, building at Diablo and building at Roy Rogers. And since building at Rogers City has less cost, we pick that decision. And similarly here, here, building at Diablo has cost of minus 11.41, which is less than minus 21. So we pick that decision. Next, we need to calculate the value of the other event node. And similarly, we calculate the value of the decision, then the value of the branch by the probability, add them up, and it will be minus 14.019. And and lastly, we calculate the value of the last even node, which will be minus 16. And choosing between minus 20 and minus 16, we pick building at Diablo, which has less cost. So finally, choosing between hiring a geologist and not hiring a geologist, we will decide to go with the one that has lower cost, which will be higher geologist with the cost of minus 14.019. And lastly, to calculate the expected value of sample information, if you remember, we always pick the branch that includes the decision of hiring the geologists. We remove the cost of paying uh, the geologists. In this scenario, since we are looking at the cost, it will be equivalent to adding the $1 million. And then we deduct the cost of other branch, which is don't hire the geologists from the first one, and the result will be $2.98 million. And that's the maximum value you are willing to pay to a geologist to do the prediction for you. And since here we obviously pay $1 million, which is less than this maximum value, we go ahead with the decision of hiring the geologists because the payoff would still benefit us.